I don't know, the green thing came on. Okay. I'm old. I'm used to talking like that without a mic, but anywho, it's there. Can you hear me now? Very good. I was asking if there were announcements. Do you know if there are announcements? Anybody? Announcements? I'm sure you people at home heard none of that. So let me reiterate. The movie night on Friday was a great success. The next one is July 29th. And that movie will be Sing 2. The next parish event will be on July the 13th. And that's Campfire and Communion at Faith at 7 p.m. And then the next parish event after that will be on July the 16th at 6 p.m. And that is the parish picnic at Rehoboth. So we're asking people to bring a potluck. So it's the potluck parish picnic at Rehoboth. So we are asking people to bring food to share. And if you don't want to bring food to share, then bring money to share. That's how we're going with this. It's in the evening so that we can have a campfire. If you have games, bring them. There is a lot to do at Rehoboth. There's a great big, huge, brand new playground. There's a pavilion. There's a fire pit. There are three hiking trails. There's a big field where you can play more than one ball game at a time. So come on over that evening, July the 16th. And what was the fourth one? Oh, the next thing here is so the next day after that, after you're all relaxed and stuff from the picnic, there'll be social hour here after worship. Sounds like fun. Anything else? Okay, Ben, go for it.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on our path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbor. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Up. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your Spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. If you have a Spark Bible, we're on page 322. That Bible is very heavy, and I can't hold it because of my poor arthritic hand. But I know this story, so I can tell this story. It's a story about Jesus and his disciples. And they're walking on the road one day, and Jesus asks them a question. He's just wondering who people say he is. Because lots of people had different ideas about who Jesus might be. So he said to them, who are people saying that I am? And they said, well, some people think you're Elijah, or one of the other prophets. Some people think you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. And Jesus said, well, that's really interesting. I'm none of those. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, what about you? You've been walking with me all these couple of years now. You've seen my ministry. You've heard my teaching and my preaching. Who do you say that I am? And they, like, I don't know, has anybody here ever been on church council? You've been on church council? Yeah, and you know when pastor asks a question, everybody looks at their shoes, right? I think that's what happened here. Jesus looked at them and said, who do you say that I am? And they all went, mm, except Peter. And we know our dear Peter, when he says stuff, it's usually wrong. So when you read the words in Scripture, and then Peter said, it's prudent to go. But this time, Peter got it right. Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yay, Peter. That's what Jesus said. <laughs> Yay, Peter. Good for you. I'm so glad you know that. And I'm pretty sure that you didn't figure that out for yourself but my Father in heaven told you that. So Peter knowing that, and then the other disciples hearing that, and Jesus telling them that Peter was right, what do you think he wanted them to do? You think he wanted them to go and tell everybody that? Actually, he didn't, which is kind of weird. He said, don't tell anybody that. Don't tell anybody until I rise from the dead. And then I want you to tell everybody. So here's a question for all you young people out there. Are we living before or after the time when Jesus rose from the dead? Who knows? Yes. After, Jesus already rose from the dead, right? We have a special name for that day that Jesus rose from the dead. Do you know what it is? What is it? Easter, right. So since we're living after that day, should we be telling people that Jesus is Messiah? Yes. Yes, we should. So Jesus is sending us out today in our gospel. We'll hear Jesus sending more people out with the message Jesus is Messiah, and he's here to bring nothing but good. Are you ready to do that, people of all ages? Yeah. Dang, that took too long. Amen.
The first reading is from Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her and all who love her. Rejoice with her in joy and all who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother com comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be confronted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like the grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Be we will read 60, um, Psalm 66 responsively. Be joyful in God, all your lands. Be joyful in all the earth. Be glory to God, Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds towards all people. Rolling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. The second reading is from Galatians, the sixth and seventh chapter. My friends, if anyone is detected into a transgression, you will have received a spirit should restore such, such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you, that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For in those who, who are nothing, they think they are something. They deceive themselves. All must test their own work than that than that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause of pride, for all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you will reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right. We will reap at harvest time. If we do not give up, so then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially of those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I'm writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision or uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As of those who will follow this role, peace upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven with a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I think we've heard this story once or twice before. This is an interesting piece of scripture here, what Jesus is doing. And it has become more interesting to me in recent years as I dug through all the stuff that I heard growing up and even some of the stuff I learned in seminary to try to get at what's actually going on here. Because what I heard growing up and some of what I heard in seminary doesn't jive with what I know about the character of God. For instance, the verses that are left out here. You see it stops at 11 and then picks up again at 16. All of those verses are complaining about, Jesus is complaining, about places that have not welcomed him. And he's saying, Woe to you, Bethsaida. Woe to you, Chorazon. And it will be better on that day, meaning the day of judgment, for Sodom than it will be for you. And I have heard all my life that this is about judgment. That Jesus is sending more people out than just the twelve. And you remember that there's the twelve, but he had lots of disciples, right? You remember that, right? Right? Okay, good. So he's gathering people from there and sending them out. Seventy of them. And he's sending them out with his authority to preach and to heal and to cast out demons. That's huge authority right there. And he's sending them out. And if you listened carefully to the first verse, he's sending them out to places where he intends to go. They're like little John the Baptist. They're out there making a way for the Lord to come up behind them. And he tells them, when you walk into a town, the very first thing I want you to do is call down peace on this town. Who remembers last Sunday's gospel? I know that was seven days ago. Does anybody remember last Sunday's gospel? 
Last Sunday, Jesus went into a town in Samaria, and the people didn't welcome him. And James and John said, hey, Lord, you want us to rain down fire and brimstone from heaven on them and burn them to little crispy critters? Won't that be fun? And Jesus said, no. No, we're not doing that. <clears throat> and today, as a counter to that, he's sending people out who knows where. He's just sending them out and saying, call down peace on these towns. And peace, all right, I'll ask you, when I say the word peace, what do you think of? You have to speak up, I'm deaf. Non-conflict. That's usually what we think of as peace, is the absence of war, right? Or if you grew up in the 70s like me, it's like, peace, man. <laughs> but that word shalom that Jesus is using is a Hebrew theological concept, which means complete and total well-being of mind, body, and spirit, which is a little more than absence of conflict. Complete and total well-being of your entire being, mind, body, and spirit. So you walk into a town, you immediately call that down on them. That's what Jesus is sending people out to do. And say to them, hey, the kingdom of heaven is here. And then heal their sick people and cast out the demons that are infiltrating, because there will be demons, because Satan and his minions are intent on making it difficult for people to hear that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They don't want it to be here. They know what that means for them. So Satan and his minions are doing everything they can to thwart Jesus' mission. And then he says, if you go into a town and they don't welcome you, what are you supposed to do then? Shake the dust off your feet, right? And say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's the same word. Now, I've always been taught this. Lutherans. We have Lutherans in this room? Any? No Lutherans in this room. Well, that's a tough crowd. All right. Well, if there were Lutherans in this room, they would know the concept of law and gospel. And sometimes the very same word of God can be both, depending on who's hearing it. And I've always been taught that the people who accept the 70 coming in, that that is a word of gospel to them. Good news, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But to the people that don't accept them, the people that they're shaking the dust off of their feet, that is a word of law to them well, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and you're going to get yours and we can hardly wait. <laughs> because we broken, sinful humans love that. We love people getting theirs, don't we? Admit it. I don't like those people. I can't wait till the Lord comes back and mushes them into nothingness. <laughs> of course, we've done nothing to deserve that. So we're completely justified in our glee at seeing other people get mushed. Nope. Here's, here's a tidbit of knowledge. If you're ever on Final Jeopardy, you can win big money. In Hebrew Scripture, the concept of Judgment Day, what we call Judgment Day, they call the Day of the Lord, is the day that the Lord comes and completely establishes His justice, God's justice, and God's righteousness on earth for everybody. Everybody. And there's clues to that in this Gospel lesson. Jesus is sending out how many people? Seventy. Why that weirdly specific number? Well, if you look up numbers, the way people that spoke Hebrew, Jewish people, use numbers, seven means completion. Seven means perfection. And ten means taking all these parts of something and putting them all together to make a whole. 
70 then is going out to announce the kingdom to everybody and telling them that everybody is welcome in the kingdom. God has said that about 495 million times in Hebrew Scripture. All nations are mine. All peoples are mine. All tribes are mine. All languages are mine. Everybody belongs to me. And one day, and that day is what we call the day of judgment, one day all people will come and worship me on my holy mountain. That's what God keeps saying in the Old Testament. That's the exact message that Jesus came to proclaim. So thinking further about these people that don't exactly welcome the, uh, the uh, apostles at the moment, and Jesus says, shake off the dust from your feet out into town, and our translation says, as a protest, he didn't say protest, he said testimony, which is different. A message. It's a message. And is the message, you're out? Given what God has been saying for thousands of years, would Jesus' message now be, and if they don't accept them, tell them they're out? That seems odd. So it made me think, since he's bringing up dust and stuff, maybe using dust as a testimony is a sign of mourning, of sadness, that the people have not accepted the message of the apostles. And the intervening verses that we left out, woe to you, Bethsaida, woe to you, Chorazon. Is he saying to them, you're ridiculous, you lost an opportunity here, so now you're going to be condemned forever? Or is that lament? I now hear it as lament. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry you're not able to accept right now this message. And then after you make this testimony to them of mourning and sadness, then what do you say to them? And by the way, we're in, you're out? No. Then turn to them as you're leaving and say, by the way, the kingdom of heaven is here as well. That's a whole different thing from condemnation and judgment, isn't it? And I'm pretty sure that what Jesus has sent these apostles out to do, that message, and the way to spread that message, that the kingdom of heaven is here, it's our job, church. That's exactly the message we're supposed to be spreading. And exactly the same way these apostles have done it. To go to people and Proclaim the kingdom, and if they accept it, rejoice with them. And if they don't, mourn with them, but still proclaim the kingdom. We have a way to do that. You want to hear the big theological term for it? I love big theological terms. You want to hear it? It's called eschatopraxis. Write that one down. What that word means is living now as if the kingdom of heaven is finally and fully realized on this earth. When the kingdom of heaven is finally and fully realized on this earth, when God establishes justice and righteousness and peace on this earth for all people, who's in and who's out? Who's in? Everybody. Who's out? Nobody. So all the scatter praxis means is we live now as if that is already our reality. That's what the church is supposed to be doing. That radical hospitality that we talk about a lot, that we need to practice more, where everybody is welcome no matter what. That there's a place for everybody in God's kingdom. And that our love for them, which is Jesus' love for them, is unconditional. 
is unending, is all-encompassing, because that's how Jesus loves us. I think Jesus is sending people out. He's preparing the way for him to come up behind them and tell them the exact same thing. Live the exact same thing. The message that he has brought from his Father. The glimpse of the Father's heart that he's come to reveal. That the kingdom of heaven is here because Messiah is here. And the kingdom of heaven is for everybody. And Jesus' disciples, his apostles, are out gathering all the disparate pieces to bring them together and make one complete whole. One complete people. The people of God. I was thinking earlier this morning that the 13 people up at Van Kirk this morning if only those 13 people lived that, what a huge difference it would make in the world. And if only the people who are worshiping at Around the River Lutheran Parish did that, worshiping today at Around the River Lutheran Parish, did that, can you imagine the difference it would make in the world? Think about if everyone who called themselves a Christian live that? How would the world be different? And that's exactly what we're called to do, church. Not just called, but empowered by the Holy Spirit to do. Called, gathered, enlightened, sanctified, sent there by the Holy Spirit to do that exact thing. To live the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is here. It's here. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Let's live it. And not just for ourselves, but for the sake of others. Amen. Oh
United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, their creation, and all in need. Those who able may kneel or sit. In today's responses, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing. We pray for missionaries who accompany your people. Lord, in your mercy, your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Guide the work of climate scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance. Motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. Lord, in your mercy, you guard the nations that no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable, vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirits to eradicate classism and inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. Lord, in your mercy, you desire abundant life for all. As we celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. Lord, in your mercy, Mother and God, you care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry. Restore employment to those who have lost work. Heal those who are sick and comfort all who are dying or grieving. Lord, in your mercy, we remember the saints who proclaim the reign on earth and now rest in, rest in you, especially Thomas the Apostle, whom we remember today. Make us faithful in our witness to Christ's new creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust those spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe, 
You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us us with this heavenly food and prepare to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, the Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is Jesus, conqueror of death, and bringer of eternal life. Come and receive him.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house, sending us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the riches of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Share it.